and I'm going to try to do it just based on the candidate, not, not on my feelings, but like on how did they accomplish their goal going into it? Did they, did they do that effectively through the debating? Again, I won't like, we'll talk about policies, but I'm not going to say like my like opinions on them. But anyways, I think the two winners and we'll see what we got Thomas here. Thomas, how you doing? Doing fine. Doing fine. And um, so we're going to talk about who we think, uh, who we think won, who we kind of thought was in the middle and who lost. So I think the two winners right off the bat, I think were Nikki Haley and Chris Christie in, in terms of accomplishing their goals. That might surprise some people. Maybe you thought there'd be more winners, but I think in terms, you, you look at what Nikki Haley came in, she announced her, she was the first one outside of Trump to announce her campaign. She started back in February. We made a video, go check it out by the way. Uh, about Nikki Haley and her experience and all that, but she kind of disappeared. Like everyone, you know, she's polling four to five percent, yada yada. Everyone knew who she was, but she kind of disappeared on the campaign trail. Last night she was there. She was in the presence. The first question thrown at her was the abortion question. Uh, I thought that was a very good answer, especially in terms of where the country is. If you look at the polling, a lot of people are still, you know, on on Republicans, of course, Democrats uh, side more with, uh, you know choice options but um even some republicans do too that's an issue that the um, gop has to work on now that roe v wade is overturned she had a very good answer with that that we need to find consensus and then especially on the foreign policy i think she you know vivek kind of had a had a better debate too and we'll talk about him later but i think she really nailed him on that foreign policy question i think she even got him in my opinion got vivek to admit he doesn't really have much of a foreign policy platform but and that she was a very strong debater. And then just really quick, Chris Christie, I think also won. Uh, is he in great standing in the Republican Party? That's another question, right? But in terms of what he wanted to do in the debate, he got booed loud. I've never seen anyone got, get booed that bad in a debate. And he just kept going. And you, to me, that so shows strength. You believe in your message. I've seen that plenty of times. Someone will get booed and they'll change course. And, oh, oh but this happened. And uh, no, he just kept going with his message. He talked about Trump. He talked about, and he actually, he didn't even bring up Trump until the moderators did like an hour in. So I, that was a little interesting that he wasn't making it entirely about Trump. And same thing with the Ukraine. I thought his response about Russia and what they're doing to kids, especially in Ukraine was very strong too. So those are my two for sure winners. What, what did you have, Thomas? Okay. that that was This is a tough one. Um, I wouldn't say DeSantis won because I, I think he did pretty good in the debate, but I don't think he, like, attacked enough on, like, certain candidates until like, prove why he should be the front runner. But he, I think he did pretty good. So I would say that he kind of deserves it in that column just because he was pretty calm, too, because he didn't, like, you know, attack, like, he wasn't being attacked, and he kind of just let the other candidates, you know, bicker at, at each other. So I would say he kind of just, like, laid low, and that was pretty, that's pretty good. You got to think that's actually better than actually going on any offensive is letting your other candidates, you know, bicker at each other. Then you got, uh, I think Pence had a, he has some great messages, but I don't say, I won't say he won. I would definitely say Haley, Haley and Ron. Haley and Ron. I think Thomas raises a good point about Ron because I thought he started, and I want to see if Thomas agrees with this. I thought he started a little nervous. He looked nervous, right? when he, And that's understandable. I'm not knocking him for that. Do, would you and Lisa agree with that? He started nervous. He didn't attack anyone, but he kind of settled in. Would you and Lisa agree with that? Yeah, I think he settled in. And, you know, I think his issue kind of was maybe dodge. Like, he dodged a couple things. But, like, you know, he should have just, you know, he needs to, like, say it off the bat. Like, you know, oh, did you think Mike Pence did the right thing? He should have said, yes, he did the right thing. But now we should move on from it because it's going to keep hurting us if we keep talking about it. His message was good on the January 6th, but he should have like, answered the question right away before getting yeah. yelled because I would look bad out of context and um I think he had a good Ukraine message saying well we can't we could do both but you know we we're not doing both right now we're just only defending Ukraine right now and our border is looking like crap and yeah. that was yeah. the thing Haley looked like a neocon with that like her response on Ukraine I like, mean don't get me wrong I I support Ukraine right they they're great people you know, I feel terrible for what's going on in that country and, you know, my sympathy for them. But okay, it's like but really, really quick to that, though, you and that's a fair position to take is Haley's position. She was strong, assertive, but wasn't necessarily popular with the base. We'll be that will be 
um, determined. You know, you could classify right. her as a neocon from that. I agree. The thing is, I thought she had the most like extensive answer. I thought Vivek had like nothing. Again, I think he had a pretty strong rest of the debate. We'll get to that in a little bit. But I didn't think he had anything to bring to that topic. And then at some point, okay, so you want to make a deal, but you got to expand on that. What do you mean when you say you want to make a deal? Um, that's all I'm saying. So uh, that's why I thought Haley was very strong. But I think she's definitely going to get a tick up. But we'll go. Um, I'll go to you first, Thomas. Who was kind of in the middle? Who didn't, you know, who had some maybe good shots, but didn't, re- you know, kind of stayed in the middle throughout the debate? Um, I would definitely say Chris Christie, you know, um, and Doug Burgum. And here's why I think, oh, and maybe Mike Pence too, because I didn't say Pence won. I think Pence had like good responses on like the Constitution. He kind of mentioned too much on the social views, but that's pretty good for the base. But, you know, it, when he pivots, he's going to have to actually explain what he wants because he's he was advocating for, you know, a lot of these abortion, you know, pro-life and whatnot. And that's not been it's not been very popular with the uh, general public. So that's going to be interesting for that. But he did pretty good on, you know, like I said, he did good with the January 6th response. He uh, did pretty good with uh, Ukraine, in my opinion. And so did um, Chris Christie. I mean, he did good with Ukraine. And um, to be honest, his one shot at Vivek was really funny. We're calling yeah. him Chat GPT. Yeah. Chat GPT. Like, because if you actually see, like, he said he was going by Obama's quote, because this is actually what was, like, Obama said he was a tall, skinny kid who had a weird last name. That was what Vivek said. So, like, you're sounding like the former president who the Republicans overwhelmingly don't like. So that's kind of something you shouldn't be saying. And um, Doug Burgum, he had some good responses about, like, yeah, the Tenth Amendment, you know, that's a lot of people that forget about it. Like, they forget that about the Tenth Amendment. That's why we didn't have a federal lockdown on COVID. That's why we, you know, that's why abortion should be given to the states. And he made a good point is that, you know, giving, we're giving too much, the federal government too much power and it should be given to the states, like what the founding fathers thought it should be. Okay. I have a counterpoint to that, Bergam thing, but we'll save that for later. So I think my middle kind of, We got four here, so pretty crowded. I got Asa Hutchinson, Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, and Ron DeSantis were in my middle. We'll start with DeSantis because we've talked a little bit about that. Like, yeah, Thomas mentioned the arguing with the moderators when they did the show of hands. He's like, what are we in uh, kindergarten? And then they did like four more show of hands comments. So the moderators didn't care at all what he had to say about that. That's funny. Um, But overall, I think he started very loud and like, you know, he did the voice that Trump and all his allies make fun of him for it but then he he settled in i think so i'm not going to knock him for starting a little bit it's just desantis to me is he again he's not doing it bad he he wasn't you know he had a positive message he had a strong message but the problem was he did you know you got to debate your opponents i think you're down he was campaigning like he's at trump where he's up 30 points he's not that's the reality of it so but i think um, at the same time like trump the person that was truly leading the ticket wasn't there so he can't go out and attack the guy who was out there and True. with him being the second place runner, you, why give you, you know, if you let your opponents attack each other and let them, their poll numbers drop, that would be better support for you because then you're just letting everyone else cook and then maybe they'll drop out in time for Ron. I and just Trump think, I, I just think Listen. a hit on Vivek, like Christy had strong hits, Pence had strong hits on Vivek. Oh, yeah. I think if Ron DeSantis. Too. I think if DeSantis had a strong, yeah, Nikki Haley, if DeSantis had a strong hit, that would be making all the headlines right now. So right. there's plenty more debates. It's the, it's the first de- debate, not time to pack it up. I think I think he did good saying middle's a little harsh, but I don't think he was the winner. So, and then Pence, kind of what Thomas mentioned too, again, Pence was stronger than I thought he'd be. I thought he'd be his normal um, monotone. I mean, there's okay, nothing- but Mike Pence has actually always been a great debater. Like if you yes. look at his past two vice presidential debates, you know, he kind of, he, everyone said that he won against Kane. And, he and I, I, I was just about, I was just about to say and, that no disrespect um, to Pence. Then Kamal Harris, like he, he obliterated her. She did not know what she was talking about. And Kamal Harris had to pull no. out a few lies like about, Oh, Abraham Lincoln said we shouldn't uh, <laughs> fill the Supreme court before the election. Like what? <laughs> And like, Pence she was lying about that stuff. And, and then, Pence in that debate tried to keep it like steady. Kamala kept trying to say, "Are you taking a personal shot at me? I'm a, you can't talk over me, Mr. Vice President." She kept trying to distract with a bunch of random yeah. stuff. Pence was very strong to point, and I was just about to say that I think he was again last night. But in this in this primary, you're not going to win if you're not a little bit aggressive, and he was a little bit aggressive last night. So I got I got you know sometimes I think Vivek got him a couple times. You know it it is what it is. So I had Pence in the middle. 
And then um, Hutchinson, I think, you know, he has like no shot. But I think in terms Never of did. the message, what caught my eye a little bit is he brought, you know, because Christie's always the one who's strong on Trump. Hutchinson was the one who brought up that Trump might be disqualified. I was not on a Republican debate stage. You say Trump might be disqualified from running for an insurrection. That's again, I'm not saying that's what I agree with. I'm just saying that he's getting his message across. Will it resonate? I don't know, but I got him somewhere in the middle. And then um, I had Ramaswamy. We've talked a lot about him already. Uh, I thought, again, I thought he like, he seemed a little like entitled to me i don't know thomas like he was just i don't know he was a little goofy honestly like yeah. hey it, it's good to have like enthusiasm and like being all happy like he actually was calm about that you know if that was donald trump in that area being attacked by three candidates trump would have been blasting like you know you see trump loses his temper very easily and vivek actually was pretty good with uh his temper he i feel like not, I, I feel like his strongest despite moment even was... a lot of booze that happened to him he yeah so i feel like it. I feel like his stronger moment was the one when he said, I'm not bought and fa- paid for. I'm not a politician. That resonates with the base. That does. But when it got to some of the specific policy ones, I thought Nikki Haley got him pretty good. I thought Mike Pence actually had some very good lines against Vivek, too. Those didn't land as much. I don't know. But um, so I had him somewhere in the middle, too. But all right, wrap it up. Did we have any losers on your side, Thomas? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like here's the thing. Asha Hutchinson. I think he just didn't really – he wasn't really, like, you know, he kind of just reminded the Republicans as the establishment, just like, oh, I worked with the uh, Bush administration. I, uh, you know, he was just very, like, not as – he didn't engage much, too, especially when he was only pulling at 1%. And, you know, then we got um, Tim Scott, too. I don't think he really did that great either. Yeah. No, and that's weird because Tim Scott has had a really strong campaign. A lot of people think of him as technically up in third place sometimes. He disappeared last night. I didn't – and, again, he's a nice guy, and that's who he is. He doesn't want to attack. But, unfortunately, in this primary, that's not going to win you the nomination. Um, yep. So, I think he disappeared. And I Doug Burgum, I really like. But you talk about the two guys on the him. end, right? You talk about the two guys on the end. And Asa Hutchinson, I remembered some of the stuff he said. It was memorable. Doug oh, Burgum, I do remember what he said. It's just like – he didn't really like get into it. Like, yeah, oh, I was the governor of Arkansas. I uh, yeah, did that's a why surplus. I had him somewhere in the middle. I think Doug Burgum, though, you're you're eighth on the stage. You know, he's very strong on energy. He's very strong on a lot of policy. If you don't know much about Doug Burgum, I'd recommend looking into him. But in terms of the debate, too much Mister Nice Guy as well. Both Tim Scott and Doug Burgum kind of disappeared, and um, that's not going to be a winning strategy. But well, I, I I don't know this debate. It started very weird. It got a little more substantive as we went on, and uh, there'll be plenty more. That's the thing. This is not this is not the only one. You just got to keep polling well, and I'll be really interested to see how the polls look after this. Well, one, I think like this the next. Was, yeah. I think the next uh, debate is like you can't if you're polling under one percent, you're not allowed to debate. So that's probably going to be hurting Aisha Hutchinson along with uh, Bergam. But 